Alright, let's get things rolling. Good evening, everybody. Got ourselves a coffee soaked MacBook. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure exactly what I'm dealing with this time. Wait, that's normal, so no surprises there. Let's see, have a look, see what it is. 860. Liquid damage. Shop deemed unfixable, didn't work. Cleaned up a little with metho and cotton bud. Work, no screen. Image on another monitor. Cleaned a little more. Got as far as taking out the antenna, went back, no screen. Alright, there are. So we've, we've got a pre work independent person as opposed to a shop. So it means the damage is probably going to be substantially less than what you normally get if you go to seconds from a shop. Greg, Travis, everybody else, 3x, charging circuits, and yes, um, I actually didn't realize for a while, but um, yeah, so I'm sure you all know about the Wall Street Journal video that Lewis Rossman is featured in. It was an actual Wall Street Journal video specifically about Lewis and the right to repair. That was a surprisingly good video. And around about, I think, about the 4 minute 30 mark, switches over to schematics and board views topic. And I was glad to see that Flex Board View was prime and center front on their video. And unfortunately, it was the old version, but then again, well, you know, we kind of expect that with Lewis. But it was good to see it up there, so yeah, a bit of uh, indirect fame for me, I suppose. Now I've just got to try and capitalise on it somehow. Let's start riding some coattails. Become a Me Too person. Look, look at me. I'm also here. Ah. See, Windows 11 October 5th official rollout. Though. Yeah, it's not far away. Volt meter display changed? You mean, yeah, it's, you mean the power supply display is gone. Alright. Yeah, okay, I can see some gnarly damage here already. Let's see, I'll just get the power supply back up and running. Not that it's going to really matter on this particular one because it is a USB C event. So the only way in which this is going to come into play is if we have to do some short detection, which hopefully, well, I don't know, maybe we will, maybe we will not. If I was American, I'd sue them for a billion, if only, if only. Alright then, I'm just going to pan out or shift this camera back a bit, and, uh, put the glasses on so I can actually see, hey Micromage. Alright, so we've got a substantial bit of damage here. This is the 1958 board, I think. I think. Oh yeah, the whole backlight circuit. This array of caps here, that's the backlight output array. So you can see we've definitely taken quite a hit there. Sorry, I keep meddling with it. That's because I shouldn't have meddled with it. All right, we'll get this thing straight out. There's no point having it sitting in there. If I can find the appropriate screwdrivers. Let's see, T6, way too big. Phillips 2, not even relevant. That was my... T5 and T4, okay, T5, T4, scratch nose. Ah, oh, Miles, aren't you just the picky sort, eh? Maybe, tell you what, Miles, send us the ones you want repaired and we'll uh, feature them. How's that sound? Seems like a fair deal. 
I get to fix machines and you get to see me fix machines that you want to see fixed. Hey, Warren Stamps, how's it going? Let's try to work out. I'm suspecting this coffee damage has come in from the back based on the fact that you know, we've got it all up here and it seems to have splattered out that way. Whereas if it's on the keyboard ingress, it tends to um, manifest in a different way. Interesting, that's... I wonder what... They've got a plastic barrier here. We haven't seen that... Well, I haven't seen that before. I shouldn't really speak of... On behalf of the entire industry when I say things like, We haven't seen that before. And the rest of the industry is like, What now? Yes, we have. <laughs> Fifteen ninety eight. That needs a new ISL. Oh, how do you know? How do you know it needs one? Why don't you pay the forty dollars and buy an ISL and swap it out? Actually, I don't know what the what are the nineteen forty ninety two forty ISLs worth these days? Because I've just bought a bunch of um, thirty nines. But I haven't bought too many 40s. Been trying to get my job queue under control. It's <laughs> not really working. <laughs> And I spent the evening just measuring up the house, seeing how much square meterage we need. So it looks like each half of the house comes out at around about 74, 75 square meters of room area that we need to tile. So yeah, it's about 150, 155. Um, yeah, square meters. Can I activate live subtitles? I don't have that option as far as I know. As far as I know, they're added after the fact. I think it is... Oh, that's seriously messed up, that is. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get to have a better look in a short bit. Yeah, I don't think that's a content creator generated option, is it? Oh, I hate these with the flipping. I'm gonna have to go and buy myself a socket just for that one screw. It's a bit like the iPhone 6S, I suppose. Australia. <laughs> Australian is impossible to translate. Yeah, that's good, Paul. Just, yeah. Yeah, I'm really not a fan of having to use the pliers to remove that small hex head. I might go see if I've got a socket driver for something that size. It looks around about 3 to 4 mil. Just be back in a second. You mungy bastard. Not what I was looking for. You're way 
too big. No, oh, so way too big. No, I got nothing. Mia, yeah, what are you doing? Hmm? It's standing too close. Uh, damn it, where did I put them? Uh, I'm just going to try another toolkit. Might be a moment. Right, not enough room in my workshop to hold all my toolkits. So I don't know if this one's going to have what I'm after. Kind of having one of these sockets, four mil socket, yep. And you're a three, damn you. Yeah, well, I was kind of worried about that. I'm fairly sure the because yeah, the iPhone one is also it's too small. Yep. So that's probably I don't know two and a half. The other one's four. Clearly, I have to do this the hard way as usual. So bought ten new ninety forty six seventy. Wow! How'd you get them that cheap? That is actually disturbingly cheap. It makes me wonder if they are in fact just a collection of 9240s that have come off dead boards and they're just giving you their scraps. Especially at 70 bucks a for 10. I'm, I'm still running around with the estimated cost of at least being 30 to 40 dollars. Clearly I'm behind the times. Oh, this is excruciating. I've really got to get a socket for that. Hey, Ron Rogers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little concerned about this board. I have a feeling there's going to be some deep damage somewhere. Hey Darren. Buy a decent socket set of rep car. Ha! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have got a couple of decent socket sets from Repco and at this point they're both well, they're both currently missing the eight and the ten mil sockets. 10 mil sockets are an enigma. No matter how many of them you buy, you, you never have one around. Yeah, I, my last big socket set I bought was for when I was fixing up the th uh, the Falcon, and I had to take the head completely off. Oh, this is r seriously train wrecked. Oh my God, how did this even survive? This. Oh, and yeah, it's a fifteen ninety-eight. Amazing that coffee missed the entire CPU section there, and the GPU section there. But even still, that's terrifying. Wi-Fi. Oh no. Ooh, yeah, that's storage. Uh, 
Uh, Warren, yeah, that, that's the where, uh, the, um, ah, oh, gee, whiz, what is it? I've got to buy a few more of these, actually. They come on special every now and then. I've got to get a bunch more. But, uh, where are Craft Room Micro set? Micro Big Pack 1, that's what it's called. Um, yeah. It's just a whole bunch of them. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, that's it there. Can't quite see it. But anyway, it's called the, uh, yeah, Craft Form Micro Big Pack 1. They're usually around about the $200 mark. Okay, so the ISL's clean. So, we're very fortunate here in what was knocked out. It could have been profoundly more catastrophic, as often is the case. But in this particular instance, it's predominantly backlight type stuff, like even all the way up to here. And I'm not quite sure what this area is. That's a speaker amp chip, I'm pretty damn sure. I'm probably wrong, but I'm going to pretend I know what I'm looking at. It's the way to go. Oh, Miles, I, I've done plenty of reballs or things like um, of the other ones. The 39. No one needs to see me redoing a 40. Okay. It's updated, so we've got the board code. Okay, so at this point, I am actually going to give this a wash down with 8020, and then I'm going to flux it. And then we're going to work from there. That CD3217 got real close to copping some damage. So it may actually have some under there. I'm hoping not. I guess we'll see. Hey, Sorcerer Stan. Thank you for casting your presence among us. Words are hard every day, Teresa. Every day. I'm just putting it all on some napkin. It's like I said, we're gonna it's gonna get a bit messy. Hey, I craft some Cape Town, couldn't it? Speaking of South Africa, I was just checking out this. I found a local couple that are making biltong. Now, they're obviously not going to have springbok or kudu biltong, but they, they use local beef. So it's not going to quite have that nice delicacy that springbok can have or that gamey richness that kudu will have. But, um, yeah, beef's a good compromise, especially when you've got no other choice. So I'm going to try out the offerings and see how it goes. Okay, someone's been sc scraped down the middle there with something. That's okay. Like a bro. <laughs> Alright, I don't know much in the way of Afrikaans, but yeah, I pretend I do. I fake it all the time. I can not Afrikaans prat. That's about as far as I go. Uh, 
And we've got someone in bringing in the French. So Michael knows. Bonjour. Ça va? Yeah, I crafts um, spent a few years over there, so mind you, I was up in Hart um, up in the Highveld in Pretoria and Johannesburg. What do they call Pretoria now? Um, Swanee, something like that. I think they changed the name, didn't they? Mind you, I was actually living out at Centurion next to the cricket field. That was pretty awesome. Every time we had a good cricket match, I'd walk down to the cricket field. If I was lucky, I could sneak a box um, seat. Otherwise, I'd just be like all the other normal people and watch it around the ring. Travis, yes, you will. Because, I mean, really, Dutch, Deutsch, Afrikaans... I mean, it's kind of, I wonder what the difference is if you measured them statistically or whatever, um, uh, what's the word I'm after, qualitatively, uh, quantitatively, how the deviation between those sort of languages are versus, say, the differences between UK, English, um, American, Australian, you know, all the different English variants. Let's see if we've got a short on this. Amish? Yeah, say so Amish as in arm or aim as in shoot ish. Victoria Swan in now. Oh man. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty serious short we got there. When I left South Africa, they were in the process of doing the conversions over. Like one of the first things they changed was the Jan Smuts Airport, which I can understand. Alright, so where's the short on that one? I guess realistically for this section, we pretty much want to wipe it all out. How about Cockney? Oh, I ain't no no Cockney, mate. I'm really not a very good uh, English variant imitator. For some reason, I always tend to degenerate to some bad Indian impersonation, as in... Asian Indian and I don't know why Ainsley yeah, I did yeah. um, back in the late 90s mid, actually it was more the mid to the late mid 90s to 2001 and then they eventually got sick of me and kicked me out they didn't kick me out but they just sort of said look we're not renewing your visa anymore buddy Time, it's time for you to go, Mr. Daniels. Uh, well, it was very enjoyable while I was there. Okay, I don't know which one of these is shorted. I don't know if any of these are shorted, to be honest. Now, I could just apply current in and see what heats up, but I think given the deteriorated state of all of these, it's best if I just remove them anyway. Kind of sound bogan. Yes, well, that would actually be correct in that case. Normski, when were you there? What sort of work were you doing? I was working in the hotel construction industry. And then I did a little bit of work at Telcom. Helcom. <laughs> that was um, interesting. Uh, naturally, I got the wrong tip for the job.
A lot of the work I did when I was over in South Africa was just trying to help. I think we had about 5,000 odd terminals or people in the network on the WAN and our WAN was constructed of a whole bunch of um, ATM lines or IDSL. We even, yeah, we had IS, um, IDSL. Yeah, the, the sort of high-speed dial-up ones. And I would travel everywhere from Cape Town to Swakopmund in um, Namibia and up to Nullspreet, down to Durban, just doing what I had to do. I did get to see a lot of really good things. Froze my thingy jigs off and I went to Castleburn, which is at the base of the Drakensberg Mountains. That was fun. Pulling cable at 2 a.m. when it's snowing almost outside at the Drakensberg is really not a good idea, but it's it's very um, spiritual building. ISDN, that's it, yeah. So you have something in common with Elon Musk. Funnily enough, he was around, as far as I know, or he had been around at where I was doing some of the work, or I was doing some of the stuff. Uh, it was the, I can't remember the name of the place, but it's, uh, I think it was in Santon, Johannesburg. It was the Data Logic. I can't remember the name of the company, but they had this like green triangle with fillets in it. And most of our internet went through them. But as far as I know, Elon was there a fair bit too at some point. But he was also over in America for the most part, as far as I know. So I don't know whether I've just got stories mixed up or what. Dimension Data, thank you. Yes, that's it, iCraft. Yeah, Dimension Data. I enjoyed going to Dimension Data, that they're a great big build complex there. They had the cricket field there, which no one seemed to use. <laughs> the food was always good. Of course, that's to be expected given the amount that we paid to get our access. But yeah, Dimension Data was it. Thanks for that. I remember going to a number of seminars there and they were talking about how Amazon was going to dominate and things like that. And how PayPal was only just getting started at that point. Well, it seemed like they were. Maybe they were already well developed, but this is South Africa after all. Get off. Thank you. Hey, JCT. No, oh, Nippon Netherlands, oh, okay. But I think realistically almost every reasonably sized company worked, you know, went through Dimension Data. In fact, I think most of South Africa's internet was through Dimension Data, particularly, you know, in the 90s. We paid an outright fortune. We had a 128K connection to them. And then I think we had, oh, we must have had about 60 or 70 ATM lines all over the place. We had a lot of, a lot of different places that we had to run data. All right. All right, so one of those caps is the shorted one because we now no longer have a short. Steve K, you calling us youngsters? Who are you calling youngsters? Uh, it's a real concern when you remove these things, you lose the short, but you can't find the short on any of the parts. Oh, I think we just found it. I think the problem might be that the contacts are just buggered. <laughs> that is... Uh, that cap... That cap's gone to heaven now.
Oh well. What matters is that the short is gone. And now I need to put some fresh ones back on. I might use some hot air assist here so I can use the pencil, the micro pencil without actually having to switch over to the big, yeah that's good. Because it's just way too much solder on those pads. So I'm guessing everybody's watched that Wall Street Journal thingy. Which I might actually remove the solder from here. Because a couple of those pads look like they could do a bit of a scratch back. Hey Kiki. Paul Howe's 61, alright, okay, Warren's 60, okay, yeah, I, I am the junior then. Um, I'm a trainee junior. <laughs> I think trainee junior is a perfectly adequate term. Hey, Copaz, how's it going? Oh, come on, Copaz, be a little more supportive. My software was in there and it didn't, it didn't crash. So I was very happy about that. And of course I'm 48. I think. Damn it, melting my plastic. Yeah, 40, 48. Yeah. Or turn the ball the wrong way, yeah, that would have been funny. Maybe they have lots of, um, maybe they have lots of retakes where Lewis wasn't cursing me. Okay, man. I was happy to see that. I was quite chuffed. I really didn't think much initially when I saw it being posted up. I just thought, oh yeah, whatever. And then I went and watched it and I was like, holy crap, there's my, um, there's my stuff. I, what is it? Abelardo Martin. Hmm. Let's see New York's waking up. A blue dawn dog, blue dog run. Plenty of solder for those. Hey, six girls. All right, now I've got to go and see what values they actually want for this. Damn it, where's my mouse pad? Because I don't really have any spare boards of this type. What are these? Ooh. Yeah, not exactly a cap that I'd normally stock. 2.2 microfarad, 100 volts. Obviously it's not going to get that high, but the trouble is 
the voltage rating of the caps sort of goes, you know, let's say 6, 3, 10 volts, 16 volts, 25 volts, maybe 35 volts, 50 volts, and then it's sort of nothing until you get to about 100 volts. Sometimes you get 63 volts. But so the only reason why they're going at 100 is because they get up to 55, which is obviously too much for the 50 volt rating. So we'll, um, we'll just have to steal from somewhere else. Kind of curious to see if the part finder will do the job. Because I know certainly on things like the 4924s they also have the bank of caps like this but I have a feeling the spec on them is going to be different and it's not in iPhones Paul. Stop. Hey Basil, welcome back. Skip the Lewis parts. Yeah. 63 and 75 for certain types, yeah. You just don't normally see them that often on the... Um, like when I say go into element 14 Farnell, you get that rather aggressive dip in availability at around about that sort of um, voltage. Okay, so the 4924 actually does seem to potentially have some. It does indeed. And it is for the backlight, so my guesstimate is correct. Lucky, lucky Mimi. It does make me wonder though, uh, if this 75 volt is out there, then I'm kind of surprised Apple didn't go for that, but anyway. I'm sure they got their reasons. Alright, switch back to this microscope, this is 4924, and I would say that's them there, as well as them there. So how many do we need, four or five? Five of them, well, looks like we've got them all there. I'll just snare a bunch of those. And um, Kiki, you you say you're a developer of the capacitors. Uh, with Apple pushing the density levels quite intensely, uh, do you know if they are the ones primarily pushing for the very high density MLCs? MLLC, sorry. Because, like, if you go onto the iPhone, there's so many caps there that, yeah, they cost an absolute fortune if you try to get them through normal channels with ridiculously high microfarad values for their size and voltage. Like you get 402s or 201s with 2.2 .2 microfarad and 6.3 volts and you're like, what? Oh, Victor Niang. Nihama. I know, I've got one cap to go yet, but anyway, forgive me. Hey, Toast Tech. It's not that hard to pick up a bunch of those things. I mean, these are 1206. Uh, 1206 in, is massive compared to most of what we're used to. You're an aluminium electrolyte capacitor. Oh, okay, all right then. Oh, well, you, you won't like my opinion on <laughs> aluminium. 
Um, I'm sorry to say, but I really loathe and detest the surface mount keyed capacitors for the aluminium. Oh my god, I hate them so much. Mostly because, particularly if you're trying to just do a prototype. Okay, I, I kind of probably went about this a bit wrong, folks. Things are going slightly wrong. I might push that one there. Yeah, I, I really do not enjoy surface mount aluminium can caps. I think because you've got to get so much heat into the board so that you can melt um, melt the solder underneath the can yeah, because it's been shielded by the cap and also the plastic base stream base no, we're gonna need a little more flux here they explode well I kind of prefer tantalum cap explosions because they've got nice that nice purple spectrum purple colour coming out of them. Of course they're horrendously toxic too. <sighs> hey Mark Bianco, yep. Has been a while. And okay, we kind of mung this up a little bit. That's because the metal was resting against it. Functionality wise, it's still okay. It you know still has integrity in terms of it will take the cable and correctly mate with it. What I don't know about MLCCs, they have crazy high ripple current capabilities, so you can use less. Yeah, I think probably the thing that the MLCCs suffer from most is um, temperature and frequency variation of capacitance. Mind you, to be fair, I don't know how that compares to others. And in fairness, a lot of people, you know, they just go with whatever the cheapest ones are, which you know, I prefer to go with something like the, I think it's the XR6 or XR5 series at least. I guess it all depends on knowing your application, which is why I shouldn't be choosing capacitors. Alright, so supposedly this board was booting. So I suggest at this point that we see if we are going to get backlight now, or whether we're going to have to do some more digging around. That jumper resistor and these caps here probably should be replaced. They're looking pretty bad, but I guess the main thing I want to see is, do we have backlight back? So I developed for eight years, huge screw terminal caps like, oh wow, okay. World's highest ripple current capability, SD capacitor. Oh, neat, nice to, um, nice to meet someone who's done something crazy like that. That's, um, they're big caps, <laughs> big caps indeed. I tend to go for the opposite direction, I'll go for the tiny, tiny stuff, as you can well see. Okay, let's see if we've got a short still. And we do not, so that's mildly promising. Not massively, but mildly. Kiki, did you ever get to test them to destructive point? Hey, do you have some off? It's cooling the board off a bit. It 
So Mark Bianco's doing his best to... Uh, oh, I found that cap that blew off too. That's cool. Doing his best to get alienated. Now, now, Miles, they need to get jealous. I mean, after all, we don't know what else is wrong with this. You know, there could still be... If there's one thing I've learned is never to assume that the board is just going to be one fault. Like, for instance, this here looks rather wrecked, but uh, hopefully we'll get away with it. I guess we'll see. She always test them until the end of life on full load temperature. Cool. So do many of them, did many of them tend to go spectacularly in their uh, final moments or was it part of your design process to ensure that they gracefully died? Yeah, just did a little bit of a and just gave up. Like, I mean, also, I guess it depends on how you, des you know, what you're designing for in terms of the failure mode, isn't it? Because what is it, um, you've got your X and your Y type mains capacitors, and one of them will f fail short, the other one will fail open. I always forget which is which. Fortunately, I don't design mains rated board or anything like that, so you're safe from me <laughs> for now. Uh, let's see, Look, this might be enough for me to at least test the backlight. During the development process, oh okay, alright, so yeah, that, well that makes, un that makes sense because you're right. Sometimes you forget something or you push it a bit too far and then pop. General question from Michael Noels. Different objects have different amounts, but if you were to start a fresh CAD drawing, how long would it take for you to get it to a working level? Um, I'm not sure w when you say CAD, are you talking like EDA stuff, like a, a design board design, or so? Can you expand on the criterion there a bit? Might be able to give you a better answer in that respect. Someone's taken my current meter. Somebody's been in my workshop. Some lousy Australian git. Ach, niemand. Was ist das? Ah, there it is. Oh, you mentioned Kai. Okay, yeah, I mentioned Kai Kai. Well, let's see. Sometimes you can do a board in like 30 minutes and it can be perfect. It doesn't happen that often. But usually I think it comes down to how pedantic you want to be and how you want the aesthetics of the board to look. You can whip together a board straight off a schematic and auto route it and you'll be done in a hurry. But then you probably spend five or six times as much time after that guiding the routing if you've got a auto router or assistive router or manually fine-tuning the routing yourself to make it look pretty even though the electrons don't really care in most cases unless you're dealing with a timing sensitive circuit or a um, matched pair lines and things like that so or you're talking about um high frequency stuff anyway let's um let's see if this powers up so five, 20 volts, 100 milliamp, 200, 200, 200, 600, okay, 400. No fan spin yet. Hmm. 400 and no fan spin. It's a little bit concerning. Oh, Catherine, thank you, yes, I was, um, Quite surprised to see that. We've got a <laughs> hmm. So we're just sitting there at 400. The worst thing is, I don't know if I've got a. Sp 
No, it's 20 volts, 400. 20 volts, 430. So that, to me, says something else is amiss. Might see if it is displaying something on the output. It could still be a problem with the bank light surgery, like maybe the driver itself has failed as well. Uh, let's see. Which wouldn't be surprising. Maybe even the fuse, in fact. <laughs> I should check the fuse, yeah, I better do that first. Uh, why doesn't Paul check the simple stuff? Because if it's no backlight, like say if it's a blown fuse, that would actually kind of make sense because you'd expect about a 600 sort of area. And the backlight usually about 100, 200 I think. Okay. That fuse is no book. Bach. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to verify that that is in fact the fuse for what we're working on. Okay, you are I'm done with you. Let's go back to this one. And yep, that's the fuse for the backlight. Well, reason why Paul does not like to use his multimeter. Why don't I like to use my multimeter? I use it. I use it a lot. Maybe not as much as some people, but I use it. I prefer to use my brain, though. And just make spectacularly bad guesses. <laughs> The upside is it's entertaining, and YouTube has been recently complaining to me that my views are dropping because I'm not entertaining enough or something like that. And I'm like, well, there's not much I can do about it because primary thing is I'm trying to fix boards for a living and write software. Uh, entertainment is not really high on my list of things I must do as a job. Secondary possibility, sure, but not primary. No job description. There's a job description. It's in the bottom there. You cropped off the bottom of your screen, Travis, because there's a job description there. Oh, that or you're behind. Alright, it's in a slightly awkwardy sort of area. I don't like to melt this stuff too much, so I'm just going to use. Um, Pickle it and then try and knock it out. The other view. Oh, possibly not. Can't be p perfect on everything. Ah, oh, Robert, maybe they put the fuse there because they don't want it to catch on fire. Mind you, they do a pretty good job of making sure everything else on the board goes first. Now, I'm not likely going to be able to get this off. You mean the schematic view? Yeah, probably. Probably not, that is. Hey, we got it off. Wow. I'm just full of surprises for myself today. Oh, yeah, normally I don't have data thing on the bottom of the schematic. Okay, so what is this? 3 amp, 32 volt, 603. I'm pretty sure I actually have those because that's a fairly much a default 
value for backlights on MacBooks in many cases. Why don't I use hot tweezers? Hot tweezers very rarely have the amount of thermal energy required to be able to get in and remove those things. It's a bit of a... The problem is that you want very small tips on hot tweezers for things like iPhones, ideally. But with that comes the fact that you can't actually impart or transfer a lot of thermal energy out of those tips. So it's great if you've got you know um, thin sort of boards, two layer or something like that, but if you try to remove that fuse with hot tweezers, the, the nano ones and things like that, it just it, you wait around too long. It's easy for me to just pick all the board, use a bit of assistive hot air, 250 or whatever, and off it comes. Come on Paul, where'd you put your damn fuses? Wait, what have we got? Wait. Eight amps, no, nah. that's a little too high. <laughs> three amps, 603, fast. Okay, hopefully, these will be fast enough to actually catch it. Reminds me, I better stick some other stuff that I got today into here. Okay, I can't put that in there. That's my 1706 extension lead. So what have we got? Screen connectors. Oh, did they send me the ones with the... Hopefully they sent me the ones with the locating dimples on them, but I can guarantee you they probably didn't. I shouldn't say guarantee, but 90% chance they have not. 90% chance these are LCD panel side ones. ISL9239 We ain't rich enough for the 1940s What have we got here? FBGA153 Oh right, yeah that's for a project that's long since gone I'll stick that into my stencils container somewhere I really need to put it in the container now. It's such a small stencil that you can be guaranteed that I will lose the damn thing. Aha, uh -huh, there you are. Okay, that's safely away. I'm a little disappointed about that uh, 1708, 1706 extension lead. I was hoping it would be more like the 1502 slash um, 1466 ones and lo behold Paul was right these do not have dimples on them son of a gun you know I asked him said do these have dimples oh yeah very much yep yep dimples yep and they do not I mean I can use them obviously I use them but it's definitely nicer if you get the ones with the dimples on the main reason being is, it A, it makes it easier to set them down. B, it actually does give some structural integrity to the connector. So instead of all the strain being put on the solder joins, a little bit can be taken by the, you know, the interference fit. Okay. Alright, Miles. Yeah, it's pretty much impossible to get a guarantee on any of this stuff. Okay, 250. It's gonna warm up the area. Yeah, maybe I can try a three sort of 390 at 40. That might be enough to see it's making that peel off already. And making that bubble. Is this is why I hate hot air in this area. I 
You see the right side there is raised up a little. Hey, Hosseman, Zimmerman. Damn it, Paul, you're just asking for trouble. Oh, that's um, that was a liquid marker. Okay, so they changed the style of them now. Black covered. Interesting. More interesting is the fact that it didn't go off until I messed around here even though the coffee had been all around and messed up everything. Hey, I repair it all. How you going? Thank you, Greg. I always appreciate people dropping that in since I never remember to. I'm pretty much my own worst salesperson. I don't really promote myself at all. I will throw myself in front of people if I feel like I have something that I can genuinely offer them, which is how I essentially came to um, get Lewis's attention. But other than that, I don't really do much for myself. That cap there looks, you got to admit, pretty shonky. It's holding, but it's not what I would call a happy cap. And there's another one around here somewhere that I saw. But first, let us see now if we do get backlight again. Hey, Umberto, good evening to you. I hate the fact that I've got really basic with glasses. As soon as I take my... I really should just make it that I have my glasses on permanently, adjust the microscope. But the reason I don't do that is that when you're working on the microscope, you do want as much optical clarity as possible, and having glasses in your way, you know, it's just another optical layer, another optical element sapping up the clarity and the brightness. That's my excuse. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with that for the moment, if you don't mind. It has a small degree of authenticity about it. Not a lot, but enough. Enough for me to get away with it. Hey, Rilla. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see if we can have... We're either going to have a, a flashbang event or we're going to have success. So back up to 20. Uh, 500, okay, we just pipped up into 500, so I'm getting a feeling that did fire up the... Yep, there we go. We've got a backlight. Now the question is whether it boots. I really don't like wearing the 
Okay, this is going to be quite slow, actually. Oh, what happened there? Looks like it's having a bit of a mental reset. Hey, Jason, I haven't got your gear out yet, I'm sorry. So many people I've been letting down lately with just not being able to keep up. Alright, so... Interesting. I'm wondering whether this is going to be... The... Okay, interesting. We don't seem to have a click. Oh, yeah, we do. Laggy. I have a feeling this is probably going to be leading me into the password recovery section, so we're just going to leave that be. We don't need that point is we do have backlight now so that effectively the primary fault is solved I think I really should clean up that cap though that one that wasn't looking so good definitely this is going through the ultrasonic Jason you having a rough time getting things fixed are you I mean to be fair Jason you, you you're getting boards like the 1700 and yeah, the um, 1958s, things like that. It's not exactly easy repair central. I mean, I wasn't able to fix anything that you sent. So, yeah, that point kind of stands. Yeah, Greg, uh, glasses are very bad for that. Yeah, okay, so... The main concern I have about that particular capacitor is that there's enough damage on it that it may lead itself to become shorted in the future. Now the other trouble is that it's not going to be the easiest thing to replace. Oh, you have been doing really well now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You just, you basically just baited me into admitting that I suck. Well done, good sir. Well done. Well played. Fell for that one. I'll retreat to the small thanks that I have for having my software in the Wall Street Journal video, and that's about it. So I'll hold on to that like my teddy bear at night. I'm not worried about the solder on that particular leg there. Yeah, you may well have jinxed yourself. Hopefully you haven't. Yeah, it's not very nice to have that happen. Okay, so this is the cap we want. 8412. It's not really a super critical cap. It's more of a just a high frequency or medium frequency filter. It does contribute slightly to the bulk capacitance, but it is more of a filtering type functionality for Ripple. But we're going to add it in because it's there and we can replace it, and it's not a big issue. So what have we got? 0.1 microfarad, 25 volt, 402. Probably easier for me to just pull it out of a new box. Microfarad, 10 microfarad, 4 microfarad, 1 microfarad, 10 nano, oh, way off the wrong end there, 100 nanofarad, 25 volt, 402, bingo. I am hoping that tomorrow 
fingers crossed, the circuit boards for the open board data capture key system finally arrive. I'm pretty, I'm actually a bit miffed about the whole thing now because I paid quite a bit of money for them to be shipped in on DHL, you know, five day express or whatever. It's now two weeks. Now, I realize COVID's been messing with everything, but a great deal of the slowdown was actually DHL's in this area dreadfully inefficient logistic system what they do is they ship if it's got to get to Townsville it comes in via Brisbane sometimes and then they ship it by air over Townsville up to Cairns which is another 450 kilometers north and then from Cairns it gets onto a truck shipped into Townsville by truck and then sent out here via post it's just like that is one incredibly bad way of doing it but for some reason DHL up here have opted to have their center in Cairns I don't know why I mean I know so far as tourists go Cairns is like the northern center but so far as industry and stuff like that goes Townsville is the North Queensland Centre. So, uh, it's something that has been going on since, well, the last 15 years easily. And they have never bothered to open up a Townsville branch. The House of Moth, no, the one on GitHub is kind of def dead at the moment. I'll revive it once I've got everything up and running again. By the way, I'm not leaving that camp like that just in case people are freaking out. I just sort of want to get the tools and, tools and Flexboard View sorted out before I reawaken the GitHub side. And once I reawaken the, yeah, once I've got that done, then yeah, I'll reactivate it and update it. What will probably happen is instead of going through GitHub, it'll actually be hosted on my website, my web server and it'll just be you'll be able to do things up like download the entire archive or download a board or even query the board i'm going to see if i can't create some images of the board but i'll probably get into legal trouble doing this i was going to say if i can generate an image of the board and people can then just inspect the values directly on the web Demarius, 500 what have github you knew that anyway. I've noticed there's a good number of people who ran away from GitHub once Microsoft acquired them. Twenty years ago I probably would have been one of them, but not anymore. Oh come on now. At the moment I have about seven and a half thousand entries on open board data. So it's definitely growing. There are people out there putting information in, including for things like iPhones and such, so it's it's developing the goal. It's getting there. What do you think about Bitbucket? I actually is Bitbucket the place where you just sort of drop random bits of data and stuff like little snippets uh, that cap's looking a lot healthier now I mean I've got no problem just keeping the I prefer to keep the data on the server that I've got rather than relying on a larger conglomerate. I use GitHub a lot though for open source projects that I have. It's just a little easier for that respect. Uh, let's see. This resistor I'm kind of a little devious about.
Oh, I think paste it was what I was thinking of. I think that might be just more oxidation than corrosion per se. We're going to test those two little pick a farad level caps, see if they're holding on. I would actually, I do have my own GitHub, oh not GitHub, but I have my own Git server for particularly secretive little projects that I have. But for everything else, GitHub works fine for me. Oops, they're shorted. I, I do get a little bit paranoid about who's hosting my code. I mean, for many years I had a, um, I had my server in the house and then I relented and sent it down to a colo and then after a while I shifted off been um, hosted down there physically and went to virtual machines so you know I've been slowly letting go but like I said there are some projects that I just will not put out on the internet for legal and technical reasons security reasons not that there's many of those But at least, you know, hosting your own Git server isn't too difficult. You just don't have the pretty features that GitHub offers. But if you don't, all you're doing is working from the command line, you're really not going to care. Plus there's, um, in Linux, I think there's something called Git Kraken or something like that. And it sort of becomes a local pretty interface if you're that desperate. Well, I will not deny that I am somewhat concerned about what's going on under these BGA chips. Sorry to hear that, Jason. What sort of pain are you suffering there in your shoulder? Because, yeah, I was wrecked the other week. All weirdness in my, in my body. Not in a good way. It actually started to wig me out, to be honest. Which is no fun, because when you start getting wigged out by what you're... you know, I've got a cough. Then when you start getting wigged out by one ailment, then your body goes into this beautiful anxiety mode, and all of a sudden you've got six ailments, which is just like... A, it's a train wreck. It's a real train wreck when you get into that state. See, so neck and shoulder bad angle. And you, oh, okay, all right, okay. Uh, mine was very weird for the fact that it was this bizarre all over chest tingling like I, I can barely even describe it. it's not pins and needles it was just extremely touch sensitive skin and then it was all muscular ache after that but it was quite peculiar all right so yeah i'm wondering whether i should 
re-ball this or we'll, I think what I'll do is I will um, just reflow it with flux and then I can go in the ultrasonic and we'll take it from there I think it might be a bit excessive at this point to go and actually rip it off the board I gotta say, when I was watching the video with Lewis on uh, Wall Street Journal, I was impressed by how steady he was able to keep his hand at that time. Because I know, you know, it's it's getting a bit of a struggle, but he managed to produce enough steadiness to get the video done. Not reballing if I don't have to. I had that it was a virus. I was shaky and it was like really painful. Just yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, um, I wasn't shaky, but it was all over my entire sort of right, uh, my left upper quadrant, and into the the back of my arm as well. It was the weirdest thing. Not reballing it. Like a tremble, even toes hurt. That's interesting. I wonder if it's sort of like just picks an area and goes to town with it, or uh, like you can get some viruses and they seem to only work on one particular side of the body or one area. It's quite peculiar. Then again, thinking about it, I suppose you get viruses that only affect your sinuses, so <laughs> maybe it's not so peculiar. Alright, this is now ultrasonic time. Um, that won't be happening tonight. We'll leave that be. I think we've done a good job getting this far. And it is 1.30 in the morning, so I think it's time for me to wrap up before I actually start making mistakes. I was kind of hoping we'd do another um, iPad mini tonight. Because I've got this one, and I was going to make this one mine. Uh, I don't even know who's given this to me. I do know it was given to me, but I was an idiot and at the time didn't... <laughs> I should just mark on the back of them who gives them to me, so then I would know. Anyway, so we're going to leave that at, as it is, and we'll put that through the ultrasonic in the morning. And, you know, we'll just be happy that we managed to solve that backlight problem, being just the shorted caps, and lo and behold, a blown fuse. So it was a bit of an unusual one. So, Thank you very much everybody for hearing. Bit, bit, bit. See? cannot even speak properly at the moment. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. I appreciate it. I will see you all next time, whenever that may be. Could be tomorrow, could be next week. Till then, you'll take care. Best of luck for your own repairs. I'll catch you later.